What is up and welcome back to CryptoGraphics. Today, we're going over how to be ready for Pulse Chain in four steps. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go over how to bridge tokens from ETH to PLS. And all of the links for today's video are going to be in the description. So the Pulse Chain Bridge, it's gonna be pulseramp.com. This is the place where you are going to come to switch or bridge any assets from Pulse Chain to Ethereum or Ethereum to Pulse Chain. Now on the right side here, you're gonna see Rink B Testnet. This is an Ethereum testnet. It is there's no such thing as Rink B in real life, it's just a testnet. Once we're here, there's a few things we can do. The first is at the top here, it shows that we're on Pulse Chain at the moment. So right next to this, there's this little arrow, switch direction of bridge. And if we click that, it's gonna bring up the full MetaMask apparently, and it's gonna to ask to switch network. We're gonna switch networks. Once we're here on the Rink B testnet, you probably don't have any ETH. What we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the Rink B faucet. Again, all of these links are going to be in the description below. You come here, you grab your MetaMask or whatever wallet, copy your wallet address to clipboard, enter it here. You can see I already did it 23 minutes ago, so I can't do any more today. You'd press send me ETH. And then we go back to the Pulse Chain Bridge and you would see in your wallet that you'll have a little bit of ETH. What you would do from there is there's a minimum that we have to do and it'll show somewhere at the bottom here when we start doing this. So let's go point, I think the minimum was 0 0.018. So let's go 0 0.02. Once we have all of this ready to rock, all we have to do is click send. When we click send here, this is gonna take a minute. It's three steps that this has to go through. So it can take anywhere from like 10 to 30 seconds. Um, just be patient, it will go through. And uh, I'm gonna click send. And then once this is done on the other side, I will come back to the video. Okay, now that we're back, I did click one button before coming to the screen. Uh, you just press okay once it's all done. And you'll see at the top right here, this will have a little red one here and it will go away. Once it's gone away, it'll show that everything's been claimed and you can see exactly how much ETH you've sent over. So now we can go back. Now that we're over and we've sent from Rink B to Testnet, there's a couple things we gotta do. First, let's switch back the direction of the bridge to the full size MetaMask. So we switch back to Pulse Chain 2B. And here, so this I think is still processing on the Pulse Chain side. So we're gonna go back and let it do its thing. So once you're here, there's a couple things we can do, but the first thing we gotta do is make sure that we can actually see ETH, which is wrapped Ethereum on the Pulse Chain uh, in our wallet. Because if you go in here, you look around, you won't see anything. You could click import tokens, but then you're gonna need an address for that. We don't have that yet. So the easiest way to do it is this little button here that says import token. You click on that and it is going to bring you to the screen where you just click add token and then boom, the balance is 0 0.058. If we go to our wallet now, click on this, Go down to the bottom, boom, ETH. Now that we've done that, it is the complete, it's the same thing if you wanna go from Pulse Chain to Testnet. Um, if you wanna bridge Pulse over, it's the same process. You type in the amount of Pulse you wanna send, you send it over here. Once you've received it on the Rink B Testnet, then you just send, switch network, sorry, and you press import token here. That's all you gotta do. And you press import token, add token, and then you will see it in your MetaMask PPLS, which is wrapped PLS token. Cool. So now that we know that, and now we know how to figure out how to import tokens and how to bridge, you can do this with any asset. You can do this with Hex, you can do this with PLS, you could do this with SHIB from uh, Ethereum to Pulse Chain. You could bridge over anything on Pulse Chain to Ethereum and anything on Ethereum over to uh, Pulse Chain. So, now that we have that and we have the, the tokens imported, and we'll just switch back over to the Pulse Chain network real quick. Now that we've done all that and we have some stuff in our wallet, now we're gonna go to the testnet version 2B and play around there and see exactly what we can do to, or with the exchange. Once we're here, again, all, of this, all the links I'm showing you are going to be in the description. First things first here, let's take a look around. We have trade, earn, and we have our info here, which shows us the statistics of the top tokens and the top pools, as well as uh, daily volume and overall liquidity. We're gonna stay on trade here. And I'm not gonna touch on liquidity today because this is just essentially the ability to add two tokens as a pair and earn rewards on it. But we're not gonna go there today just because it's a little bit of a complicated topic talking about whether it's worth it or not, or whether, um, basically if you don't know what it is already, just take some time to either understand it or don't worry about it too much yet. I will create a future video on it and 
uh, talk about the risks and the rewards. But for now, we'll just stick to more of the basics. In Earn, there's pools and farms. Uh, the pools are going to be the staking pool, single-sided for uh, Pulse X, just to earn the third-party uh, token whenever we uh, find out what that is, which will probably be mainnet. But let's go back to trade for a second. Okay, so once we are in here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to import our ETH into here. So I already have it, but what we can do is there's two things. The first is you can go to this little thing here, and it, this will usually be off. But if we click this on, you see how there's eight tokens here and there's this little wheel. What we can do is we can actually click on that and we can go click C, click on that green button there. And it will bring you to this website where it will show you the wrap tokens that have been bridged over. So what we'll do, what you can do here, if there's another token or ETH that you maybe forgot how to do it, uh, you can go this route and see this little button right here that almost like the chain links. You can click that and then you go back over to the exchange and you would go to the tokens and just click in here because we're making sure we're in the list right now. So we go back over to tokens, click this and you just paste it in there and you would. And once you've pasted it in here, there will be a button to add. It's already active in mine and it won't let me do it again. So you click the button to add to your list. And then once you go back in here, you will see E ETH and you can then trade it on the Pulse Chain Network. And you can go max balance and boom, you could trade it for anything. That's how you import two different ways. And if you want to swap this ETH, you do have to have one extra transaction involved before you can swap. And this goes for any token whatsoever that you've bridged over or that hasn't already been enabled uh, bought through your wallet within the exchange itself. So you'll have to press enable ETH. And here's the fee. We're gonna press confirm just to access our stuff. And then once that's enabled, then we can go ahead and swap it. So now that it's all done, uh, we can go ahead and swap and we're gonna confirm. It's gonna bring up the world's largest MetaMask and confirm, sweet. Transaction submitted, boom, done. So that is how you swap, that's how you bridge, and that is how you import tokens a few different ways. And if you're wanting to play around on this network uh, and you don't have any pulse, where you can go is there's a pulse, uh, a test pulse, testnet faucet. Again, this link will be in the description of the video. And you come here, go to your MetaMask, copy your MetaMask wallet address, paste it in there, and then you request the tokens. And once you've sent uh, your, this to your wallet, it should pop up in a minute or two. Uh, I believe this is received. I think I got it. Maybe not yet, but it's okay. I have a bunch here. So you will you will get yours very soon if you do this. Uh, it should only take like a minute or so. Now, once you get it, you can come in here, go pulse, play around with the different amounts and see how much you can buy with uh, however much pulse. You can, get, you can play around with small amounts. You can practice uh, doing the little farm stuff just to check it out, just to play with it and just get comfortable figuring out how to do all of this stuff. But let's move on to the staking with PLSX. So let's go to the pool here and let's talk about this real quick. So again, the PRT token, if you watch my other video, um, I wasn't sure what the utility is in that video, but there probably won't be any utility because the, this will not be the actual token. It's a placeholder token that is going to be replaced by third party tokens that can be earned through different pools. In this pool, Currently, there is a max staking limit. Once you're staked in here, you can earn this PRT. Once you start earning, basically you have two options. You can harvest this, which you click this button, press confirm, it'll do that, or it'll pull it all out and pull it into your wallet. Or what will happen, and if you don't have PRT in your wallet, you can just click this little button here, add to MetaMask, and it will bring you to this screen, and I've already have it in, so I don't have to worry about it, but it will show the tokens or the token and how much your balance is, and it will get you, uh, it will put that into your wallet for you. But if you've already staked and you are earning, there's two ways that you can go ahead and pull out all your funds. The first way, if you wanna keep the stake going and you wanna just take out your PRT, the first way is to just harvest. The second way, if you wanna do it all at once and not do two transactions, you would press the little minus button here. You drag this or press, drag this all the way, or press the max button. And then once it's at 10, 10 million or whatever your number is at, press confirm. And all we have to do from there is just pay for a little bit of gas. So once that's gone through, I'll show you how to put the stake back in. But one quick note on the 
the timing and the APR. This isn't the APR that we're getting in here is pretty unrealistic. Uh, so don't expect that whatever you're making in here to be what happens on mainnet. This is just a test net and for test net purposes only. Uh, even these staking limits, as far as the time frame, uh, we don't know how much, uh, how long the stakes are going to be. This started at like 18 days, I believe it was. So uh, don't expect all of these, the the timers and the APR um, to all be exactly the same. Uh, even the stake limit could change or be completely removed for mainnet. It could be optional. Um, that part is kind of up in the air as far as I've seen, and I haven't seen any concrete information yet. So uh, like I said in the previous video, the staking strategy that I used in uh, three ways Pulse X could 10,000 X your money. That's my updated uh, view on that. So let's just quickly go through this in stake. It's very simple. You click stake. If you have a uh, Pulse X, you can go here. You can do 25%, 50%, 75% max, and it will dump everything or 50% of it, whatever you whatever you can do. And you all you do is click confirm. Also, this annual ROI at current rates, ignore it. It's testnet stuff. It's not really going to uh, give you an accurate estimation of any kind of earnings. So just completely ignore it for now. Then you press confirm and we're going to go to MetaMask again, confirm it. Then once this is all done, you should see this pop up in just a second. So once that's up, this will be initiated and the PRT will start to harvest. So that's number three of the four steps that uh, we are taking here. So the first one just to go over was how to bridge your tokens from ETH to Pulse and Pulse to ETH. The second one was how to import tokens into the wallet from either going to the Pulse net or the Pulse test net or import from both wallet and the token or import to both wallet and the token list. Uh, and number three, obviously we just went over the how to swap and stake. So number four is how to stake in a PLS validator if you have a TPLS. So let's go there right now again. The links for all of this are going to be in the description below. Once you're here, you're going to see all of the validators and you're going to see something like this where it says misdemeanors and it's covered colored in orange or felonies. And one, this is basically strikes against these validators for not having uh, transactions go through and not holding up their end of the bargain, if you will. And if these get too high, these validators could be penalized essentially and looks like the, they already have if we click this last one or the first one here which happens to be hoddledog.com and we were to go here to the pls staking side you have you can see how much the total delegated stakes are and then you can see how the total rewards earned so far i'm not sure over how much time this is but all we got to do if we want to stake is go hit the plus sign and then once you're in here you can check because it doesn't obviously show us in the um on the front page exactly where the the minimum is for staking so what all you've got to do is you got to click on the plus sign there press one or any number and it will show you how much you need in order to stake in this pool and this one is currently 4.4 million so I can't do that one. Sorry, hot dog. You're going to want to look at the revenue shares here and you're going to want to see who has the best revenue share. I mean, David Feeder obviously wins. Let's see what his max or minimum stake is. 2.3 million. So you kind of have to mosey around and figure out exactly which one works for the amount of pulse you have because these will have minimums. And if you don't have that minimum, you cannot stake in the pool. Also, if you do stake in one of these pools or delegate to the, de the validator, sorry, uh, and stake your pulse, you are going to lock in your pulse for 24 hours. After the 24 hours, then you can remove both your pulse and any rewards you have accrued. It's good to know how to do this because if you have pulse, this is going to be the main way to earn on your pulse, earn extra or yield if you want earn more pulse with your pulse um, without putting it into a liquidity pool, which we'll get to at some point in a later video. But this is the fourth and final way to maximize when pulse chain goes live because the sooner you can get on these these steps the sooner you can bridge over assets the sooner you can import tokens the sooner you can take your plsx and stake in the pool or your pls and delegate it to validators you are going to maximize your gains one thing i didn't cover about the validators here that i want to make you understand real quick is that basically by staking in the pool you're basically voting for these validators and there can only be 33 validators in rotation at a time. So if you go down to uh, how many are on a page here, I can't tell, and I'm not going to count it real quick, but basically if you count out where the 33rd validator is, anyone within that, that has a minimum that 
you can actually stake in and has the revenue share that you want, those are the ones you want to stake in unless there's something real good right outside uh, the 33 because there's a constant rotating uh, validator for every so many blocks. You want to make sure you're actually within the validators that are revenue sharing with you and actually going to get those rewards because if they're not getting the rewards kind of just sitting around doing nothing doesn't really make a whole lot of sense make sure that when you're doing this you are actually looking for the top 33 or if there are ones below that have really good and they're close which could get in which would be like just outside a couple maybe one or two outside of the top 33 then go for it sure why not but other than that, stick to the top 33 because those are the only ones that are going to get you paid. So thank you so much for watching. A little different video today, no presentation. Just wanted to go over a quick how-to on the test net. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, again, all of the links will be in the description for this video down below. And if you haven't followed me on Twitter already, I'd love for you to follow me at Cryptographics on Twitter. That's C-R-Y-P-T-O-G-R-F-X. And guys, if you did like the video, please smash the like button, subscribe for more content uh, like this and like the previous presentations that I've done. And please drop a comment as well with your thoughts or anything you learned or anything you'd like to learn. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. I will be streaming also tonight, uh, probably around the 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So be on the watch for that one. If you have more questions to do with this video, we can go over that in tonight's stream. So thank you again and we'll see you later. Peace.